Father, we thank you, God, for just your wonderful presence, God. Um, and uh, we are so grateful, Lord God, that you may hear the cry in our hearts, God, and, and be a God that answers and stick closer to us than our brother, Lord God, that, Father, our, our confidence, our, our love is in you, Lord God, our being. And so continue to uh, guide, guard, and govern our hearts. Um, giving us a heart after you, God. And we thank you, Lord, that only you can fill the hole, the gap, strengthen the, the, the things that need to be strengthened, Lord God, to bring light in a place of darkness in our lives. And Father, it is you. And so we are so grateful, Lord God. At this time, as we enter the reading of your word, we pray on anointing again. Bless our ears and our hearts that we hear what the Spirit says. God, more than that, just not be a people that hears the word, but help us to be a people that apply the word in our lives, extending the kingdom of God in our families, in the highways and byways, and to the ends of the earth. So bless our Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so in a few days, it's going to be Independence Day. Amen. So I just thought it would be another fitting moment to say, Happy Independence. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I call my mind. And uh, that's the title of my talk today. It's Happy Independence. <coughs> and interesting enough, you can look at independence uh, physically, but also you can look at independence spiritually. Amen? Okay. Some comparison and an independence. I find that have several different seasons, or many seasons of independence. And then there's a uh, interesting uh, enough. Certain people declare this to be independence, and still other people declare that to be independence. It's almost as if I like to say that um, I don't know who uses this term, but I've been using this term recently. It's called POV. Amen? Some of you guys may know that acronym. Maybe you can help me this morning. POV means some point of view. Point of view. Amen? So one person say, well, I see this as my independent. I see that as my independent. And so I, as I wrap my mind about independence, I think about all the thing that I think is important that, A, when I was young, and, and as a child, I could walk, and then I could have privilege to go place. I felt the sense of independence. And, and, and then when I was a teenager, as I was growing up, still had some restrictions, but then I had a sense of independence. And then when I became an adult, I turned 18, and then I felt another uh, sense of independence, amen? So as we, as we just look at the theme or the understanding of the word, the word independence kind of is attached to the word of freedom or liberty, amen? And as we look at some of the spiritual terms, we think of that. I like the term that says, who the, sen who the son sets free is free indeed. And so you can experience uh, the, the feeling, of the understanding, and clarity of a true independence. And, and when you think about it, here's the POV now, right? In my mind, I'm free because the sun sets me free. It doesn't mean it's in your mind or in other people's mind, right? So that's why I said I wanted to bring this kind of POV into view because we, we, we flow through the thoughts and the seasons of a sense of different type of independence. And as I share with you, you these thoughts, and I'll share some scriptures as we, uh, as we journey through just a couple of things uh, talking about independence. The whole idea behind this talk this morning is that one of the things I love, as we look at things around us, uh, 
holidays and things that happen in the news or um, our everyday living. I, my promotion is that, that whatever happens or have a sense of importance or question, that we would turn to the Word of God. That we would say, well, what did the Word of God say about this, about that topic and about this topic? And the promotion is that people would continue to seek not only the Word of God, but the presence and the will of God. Whether, whether it's this issue, that issue, this issue. And, and at times, uh, we, it feels like we get so caught up that we don't seek His face. Or we don't seek His Word. Amen. So again, part of the promotion when you hear some Sundays and it is that we can take any uh, normal day event and, and say, hey, check out the Word of God. What, 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 what does the Word of God say? Amen? And, and to me, if we continue to do that, um, it, it changes your perspective. It, it just changes the way you think. It just changes the way you feel and how you do things. Amen? That you continue to Seek the Lord. The Bible says that if you seek Him, you shall find Him. Amen. Amen. If you knock, the door will be open. And so the promotion is that, again, in any situation, holiday, event, things on the news, that we return to the Word of God and press towards the will of God. Amen. Not to, not to throw the stone, but to lift up. Amen. If too quick, the world wants to throw the stone and, and whatnot, use the stick. But praise God, help us to be a people that lift them up. Amen. And so, um, again, independence, as we think about it in a broader scale, um, again, it, it, it applies physically, spiritually. It's constantly, sometimes moving because... Because of your point of view. Amen. And I believe, you know, according to God's word, if we were sound in God's word, amen, we're free. Yes, amen. Right. For the sunset, who the sun sets free is free indeed. So one of the, the first stories, and because of time and space, I'm not going to go there, but when we talk about independence, it kind of started in the, the beginning in the book of Genesis, right? And we know the story of Adam and Eve and uh, the great independence that was given from the beginning of time was, was the freedom to choose, amen, the power of choice. And we, we recognize that in the story of the Garden of Eden or in Genesis, they could practically do anything, but they, just one thing was a no-no, amen. That mango tree was off limits. Okay. That mango tree was off limits. Take care of the garden. People say, you know, some of you guys know what I'm talking about because I always talk, talk about the tree that wasn't an apple tree. I know there's a few of you guys don't know, so I'll tell you. There's a tree in the garden that says, God said, don't eat of this tree, the fruit of that tree. And uh, when we were uh, young children, um, it, for some reason, the story went, there was an apple tree. You couldn't eat from this tree, this apple tree. And then some of the story books called them the apple tree. But later on, when I grew up, I knew somebody said it was a mango tree. Because, right, after they eat from the tree or the fruit, God said, man, go. Right? So, but I'll be here on Sundays. No, okay. But it wasn't a, it wasn't mango nor uh, or apple or even a grape. One guy told me it was a grape, and that was something else. Uh, it was a grape, and I said, "But grapes are from vines." Anyways, but the Bible says it was the tree of the knowledge of uh, good and evil. So I would have one really one fruit. But when you're a child, um, people try to tell you stories to help your mind to be tangible, uh, to get the principle of things. They want to go after the principle that you understand the concept, right? 
And, and, and there's some good in that. But when I was a child, I speak as a child, but when I grew up, I put away my childish things. So there's some things that we ought to find out for ourselves. Amen. Not just because pastor said this or somebody said that, that you know, I, I'm a big promotion of uh, go find out. Go read the word. Go seek the Lord's face in prayer. You no, know, just believe what you hear. You know, my, my dad always told me that when I was growing up. Yeah, don't believe in everything you hear. I mean, and, and, and don't put your trust, don't anchor your trust in man, but anchor your trust in God. Because we, we human and, and we're going to fail each other. We, I, I'm going to fail you, you're going to fail me, our expectations of each other. But, amen, put our anchors and our trust in the Lord. And so, um, we'll find out, amen, we'll find out for yourself what I say is true according to the Word of God, and you'll be amazed. And so, the story in Genesis really sets up the scene about God giving us sovereignty as, as mankind, giving us the freedom to choose, amen. And in, in that moment, in, in, in choosing, you know, um, you can choose right or you can choose wrong. You can tell God yes, but you can tell him no. And, and we, we, we discover our sovereign God gave, as we were made in his image and his likeness, he gave us the sovereignty for truth. And, and praise God he does. However, at times, I kind of wish that some people as I look out and not look within, I look out and say, God, I wish you would do that and you don't give that person the right to choose, but just wring his neck or her neck or bring him into the fold. Then the truth is, if he did that, then my neck would have been wrung a long time ago. Amen? Amen. Amen? But thank God he's a forgiving and loving God. Yes, God. Amen? Because none of us would be worthy but through his Christ, through Jesus Christ. He made us worthy, amen? You, and so anyways, the, the, the thought of independence, it truly starts at the beginning of time, how God gave independence in the garden. And we still have that independence to choose, amen? And, and we pray and seek the Lord that we choose the right way, the right will, and, 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 and choose God, choose life, amen? Um, the second thing, as, as we move through the thought of independence, um, we went through a period of, 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 in the Old Testament, we went through a period of sin, separation from God. And again, you know the story. And, and, and when Jesus comes on the scene, um, there's a, a great redemption. Amen? I'm going to read a, a passage from Ephesians um, chapter 2. Uh, I was going to read just a couple of verses, but um, I, I, I'll read a few more in there. Starting from uh, chapter 2, I'm talking about this redemption, love of God, and independence. And you were dead in the trespasses and sin, chapter 2, verse 1, in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of powers of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the son of disobedience, um, among whom we all once lived in the passion of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and the mind. And we were um, by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in his mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show 
the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift from God of God. Amen? Amen. And so, one of the great independence is we, we see God gives us the sovereignty to choose but there is sin and sin nature and we're born into disobedience and wrath but through God's love and his mercy again he gives us this grace something given but undeserved and in that grace it's like a separation is no separation anymore that we again when, when who the sun sets free is free indeed. That under the blood there is mercy. Under the blood there, the restrictions are lifted. And, and, and we, if, if we understand that we, we come into this great independence uh, with the Lord. Um, and sometimes, quite often, uh, because of our lack of discipline and practice or in our nature of culture um, we, we fall astray or, or we are not that in tune that we could be and we should be with the Lord um, when, when I was working uh, the 9 to 5 um, for many, many years of my life, I, I worked uh, the nine to five job, amen? I would never see myself as an independent entrepreneur. However, I got hooked up with the door of faith and Pastor Umi and company, who somewhat lived his life entrepreneurial. And he reminded me so much of my dad <laughs> they were into one thing and before you know it they was into another thing and another thing and then another thing and it was always kind of a triangle or some kind of almost borderline Ponzi scheme was like but it was just like relationship building and it was always a service provided behind it so I, you know I would love the concept and I just you know I, I couldn't help but fo follow or, or fall in love uh, with some of the ideas and the teaching. Never in my wildest imagine <clears throat> that I would be an entrepreneur or uh, kind of an independent contractor. And uh, when you stuck in a nine to five, that's all you know. Nine to five, the health, health insurance, maybe and all the benefits that come to that. And then you jump into this different world, and then it's weird for, for me anyways, I don't know if every entrepreneur or people like that. When you jump into this world, you're like, why was I ever on that side anyways? <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> then, but, however, because you experience a different world of independence and freedom. Amen. But to be successful, there's discipline. Amen? Amen. I mean, you cannot, you got to show up. You got to mean what you say and say what you mean. If not, your, your business going down. Amen? Well, with the kind, nine to five, you would be there, Johnny on the spot. And so, some kind of sense of independence. But, um, when you look at it, Sometimes when I think about the things of God, we are required for a discipline higher than higher than we give sometimes. And I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for anybody. But we should come early. We should pray. We should do these things. And as we do these things, we will reap the benefits of the things we ought to be doing. And somehow um, we struggle and, and we spoil in the independence. Um, 
And so it's just something to think about, pray about. The disciplines of the Lord or independence of, of the Lord. Um, again, we, we, we free. There's freedom. But that leads me to uh, my third point. And I'm going to wrap it up because we're going to take communion. <coughs> my third point is in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. And we're talking about this independence. It says all things are permissible or lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and stomach for the food, and God will destroy both of them, one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of prostitutes? Never. You do not know that he who is joined to prostitute becomes the body with her. And as I skip down to verse um, 19, it says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not of your own, for you were bought with the price. Amen. So glorify God in your body. Amen. Thank you, Lord. One of the points, I, uh, my final point to share is that in this freedom or this independence we get in the Lord, It, it opens up a freedom that you can do things, right? Um, it is permissible under the blood of Christ. But many times, is it really, um, is it really beneficial, right? Um, there's, there's some things I, I restrain myself for because it just... Here's my testimony of black eye. I can, I, yeah, I can go out and go to the bar and have a drink. Uh, drinking is not um, a sin. Drunkenness is. But in my case, <laughs> I'm allergic to alcohol, so if I did that, I would end up in the hospital. That's another <laughs> story. But I'm just trying to um, share that we have freedom of choice and, and freedom to do things. But we should consider, um, you know, sometimes too much of something, maybe just too much. And sometimes, you know, I think about how a good name is is better than riches and, and silver. Amen. So I, I, I'd rather lose money than I can keep a good name for Christ. Amen. You know, um, I'd rather abstain from some stuff. Not because I got them, but, but then I, it keeps me above reproach. And at times I, at, at times I, I get bent sometimes, and, and yet you got to get back on, on track. You know, just a little bit, um, the fish was this big, and the fish was actually that big, right? We kind of bend them a little bit. Well, let's get back to exactly what the size it should be. Amen. Amen. Too much bendy, bendy <laughs> leads us down a greasy pole. Amen. When we stop going down one slippery slope, man, that grease gets faster and faster. And so I'm just encouraged. That, again, I'm sharing this with you, but I'm sharing this with me. Something that the Lord had put upon my heart. As we think about independence, um, living truth is a challenge, but in, in the Lord we can. Um, you know, Jack Nichols said it best when he said, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> I, 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 
men are just watching TV sometimes, right? Right? But we can. Let's press toward the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Let's grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let's be hot and not, not, not cold, not warm, but hot in the Lord. Doing the thing, setting our standards high above and just press. And we can do it together. Amen. Amen. And yes, um, numbers are good. But maybe when I see the Lord shake the tree, there's only a few fruit left. There's only going to be a few strong fruits on the tree then. When, it, when the army came to lap the water, those who stood there headed in the, the water, they went home. But those who were attentive and used their hand to lap water, that's the one that the Lord took to that. And, and so, the world looks at numbers, the world looks at quantity, God looks at quality. And I want that perspective too for you. But we get some working out to do, you know, in ourselves, in our discipline, and, and how we execute things. And, you know, it's, it's just an idea and a moment away through the Holy Spirit. You know, once we were this, then now we're this. It's like salvation. Salvation is just a heartbeat away. One person can be living for the world and, and, and just that quick living for God. Amen? Amen. Okay, so we're going to close in prayer. We're going to take communion. I need some help. The brothers, please. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God. Continue to speak to us, God. Help us to hear <clears throat> what the Spirit says, God. Breathe the Almighty in us in this day and this time. So we, we just thank you, God, that we're pressing to the deep things of God. Help us to respond. Forgive us of our shortcomings, God. Help us to burn up our loins, Lord God. Pastor Brian used the word of suck it up, buttercup. And so we thank you, God. We bless you. That we truly can um, experience the independence of your anointing. It's not in a box. It's not in a temple. Built by, uh, built by human hands. It's you, Lord God. Coming in like the wind. Having the freedom to come in and to move. And we thank you, God. Father, as we enter the time of communion, book, we just pray that you bless the elements, anoint it as it represents the body of Christ and the blood of Christ that was shed. As we partake in communion, Lord, set our hearts, renew it, restore it, refresh it, God, as we just continue to do it in obedience of you, God, just to declare our love for you. And so I want this time as we take communion. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.